Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Peter here. So today we're checking out the full line from the House of Zoologist. So I've been excited to check these out. Thank you to Victor for sending me these. I've appreciated that a lot actually. Um, all, you know, all the other reviewers have been talking about this house and I was kind of feeling like I'm missing out on something special. So, you know, I really do appreciate you sending me these. I've definitely enjoyed um, checking, in, checking them out and there's definitely one I'm going to be buying. <sighs> so, I'm going to start off by saying quickly that I absolutely love the presentation. Like, ev even the presentation of the samples, I mean, they're just classy and just really cool. Like, one of the coolest presentations I've seen, the bottle itself. You know, they look amazing. I, I love that sort of slanted front. That's really, really nice. And the actual the imagery of the animals and the way they're dressed up. The artist who did those is fantastic, just genius. And the simplicity of the black and gold, it just works really well. So, you know, I'm quite creative myself and visual, so I appreciate when something's done this well. And it really is. I think you've done an, an amazing job here. So I'm going to be looking at each of the fragrances of the whole line. If you'd like to skip ahead to any one in particular, please click the description below and you'll see a timestamp to any of the, uh, of the fragrances we're going to be covering in this video. And you can go straight to that particular, to that particular review. But we're going to start off with Beaver. Now, <laughs> this is probably uh, quite daring and different. I mean, it opens up with a muskiness, but straight away I get smoke, like a campfire smoke. And it's reminiscent to me of the smoke kind of used in um, A City on Fire by Imaginary Authors. It's that very authentic campfire-like smoke mixed with this muskiness. But <laughs> I know this is going to sound contradicting, but there is a fresh air note in here at the same time as that. And to me, it kind of I don't really smell it as fresh air, to me it reminds me of like when you've washed your top from, from the washer and you pull it out and you smell your t-shirt and it smells clean and fresh. That kind of freshness that you get in the air around you from a, from a fresh top, that's kind of the freshness vibe that you get in here. But after about five minutes that's kind of gone and it delves into this really animalic musk uh, from cust uh, Castorium. Very, very musky, very, very animalic. This smoke note uh, sort of amplifies, and you get this rich, thick uh, campfire smoke uh, blended heavily with that um, animalic musk. Very, very interesting, very, very daring and challenging. It's definitely not going to be for everybody. I really liked it though, and the image that it gives to me is imagine a beaver sat in front of a campfire and the beaver's wet, all its fur's wet, you know, it's just come out of the river and it's huddled up by a campfire, it's warming itself up and drying itself out. So the heat from the fire is actually releasing this smell from, from the wet fur from the beaver. So you get this animalic, musky furriness in the air and then it starts to rain and the rain puts the fire out. So you get this damp, uh, burnt wood and this smoke coming up as you know as the fire gets put out you get this smokiness smokiness filling up the air that's exactly what I smell here this um, sort of animalic uh, muskiness mixed with this uh, fire smoke and sort of damp wood kind of uh, thing going on as it dries down more um, and this fits in perfectly with this image that I'm imagining as well is that the smoke sort of goes away and you're left with the ash of the fire but it's like a damp ash to me um, so yeah I mean it's like a like a like watching a little scene you know as the beaver comes out of the water dries itself off you get this muskiness and the smoke from the fire that it's sat around and then it rains and the fire gets put out and the smoke goes away and you're left with this damp ash that to me sums up the whole story of this fragrance uh, in the dry down it gets less harsh and less animalic, it kind of just tones down and becomes a little bit uh, easier to digest I would say. It's really really nice and interesting and different and unique. 
Um, I can't say I've ever smelled anything particularly like this before. So really, really good. In terms of longevity, I got about six to seven hours of longevity with about two hours of a moderate sort of soft projection in sillage. It didn't really push out all that far, but I think for this kind of scent, that is actually a good thing because of how daring it is. I think, you know, being more in your personal space is, is just fits this fragrance very well. I kind of appreciate that for this fragrance. So impressed with that, it's really interesting and different. If you're into the art of perfume as, you know, as an imagery, like, you know, how we view Andy Tower as, as an artist who creates unique uh, pitch escapes with, with scent. You know, that is such an amazingly complicated uh, and talented thing to be able to do, to, to have a fragrance create an image. And that's just crazy insane to me. So I have huge respect for the perfumers involved. That's exactly what zoologists is doing here. They're painting an image with fragrance and it's fantastic. Uh, next up is Bat. So this is Bat. Um, I actually never expected to smell the note of wet soil in a fragrance. <laughs> I think that's just, I have to think of that, to put that in a perfume is just really unique. So the perfumer that created this has got a really good imagination. Again, it's just really unusual and unique and different. I've never smelled anything like this before. It opens up with a wet soil, basically. You know, like you're gardening in your garden, wet soil. I mean, it's just authentically soil that's wet. You know, and it's mixed with this um, ripe, fruity banana. Like the bat's just flown through the jungle and it's munching on this banana. As it develops uh, quite quickly, I get more of a tropical fruit vibe, like the banana kind of gets replaced by this tropical fruitiness. Um, I'm not experienced enough with tropical fruit to know exactly what I'm smelling, but I just know it smells tropical. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really interesting and different, and then it kind of changes again, and you get this, uh, I mean, it's still earthy at that point, that soil hasn't gone away but it's just mixed with this sort of tropical fruit vibe. And then it kind of develops into a more musky scent uh, and sort of damp smelling. And I think this is sort of the transition of where like the bats flying into the cave. So it really does take you on a journey, this fragrance. It's pretty crazy to be honest. And I have been in quite a lot of caves. I'll put, post some pictures as I'm talking of the caves I've been in, in Vietnam. And this instant, the mid of this fragrance instantly takes me back to walking through those caves. I mean, it is insane uh, how well this gives you the image. And, you know, it's like a memory for me. I smell that and instantly I'm, I'm thinking of, I'm walking through those caves again. You get this uh, rich mineral-like note, which is like the water drip, dripping from the stalactites in the ceiling. And when you're in a cave, you kind of get this um, it's really hard to describe, and I don't want to use words that sound off-putting, but it's almost like a stale air, like sort of something a little bit stagnant uh, and um, foisty almost, and kind of damp and musky. It's, uh, it's hard to explain without sounding bad, but it does smell good, um, as crazy as that sounds. And you kind of get more of this uh, kind of a leathery kind of uh, smell, uh, muskiness, and there's a, that sweetness from the fruit doesn't seem to go away. But I don't know if it's the tonka in the dry down coming out or whether it's just the, the fruit hanging on there. I'm not quite sure, but I just know it smells slightly sweet throughout the whole of the fragrance. And it kind of just tones down into more of this musky, uh, mineral, earthy sort of smell before it fades away, but I mean, it lasted like 11, 12 hours on my skin. Like it, it just would not go, it held on for ages. So 12 hours to me is fantastic in terms of longevity. Projection also was very good for, you know, projected quite well for up to about three hours. Very impressed with the performance of this one. I think this was the, the best performing one. And it's just crazy. Like I say, you know, if you're, 
if you want to go on a journey, you, you, you view perfume as an art, this is just a must uh, try experience. They're just absolutely mind blowing to me. Uh, what they managed to achieve here with how you, how you um, you know, the imagery that it gives you when you smell this and how it progresses as well. The progression of the fragrances are just really, really crazy. Excellent stuff. Next up is Panda. So this is Panda. I'm actually going to spray this one again just to remind myself of the top notes of this one. Yeah, so with this one, I get a lot of bamboo, but it's got this Szechuan pepper which gives it a kind of a spicy kick. So it's kind of like a sharp kind of spice, but with this very green bamboo. I mean, it's interesting, I've never, to be honest, I've never smelled bamboo in a fragrance before, so this is, uh, again, it's new to me. To be honest, this is probably my least favourite of the line, but purely just because of the fact I'm not really into green fragrances, that's kind of the only reason. If, if you do like green fragrances, um, then it's obviously worth checking out. But it's bamboo, Szechuan pepper in the opening. It's kind of sharp and uh, very green and quite strong in the opening. As it develops into the mid, I kind of, it kind of becomes waxy, almost. That's the best way I can describe it. Like um, like it, like it almost has a waxy texture to the fragrance, and then you kind of get these floral kind of notes. There's meant to be lilies in here. I don't know if that's what I'm smelling, but it's, it has like a florally green aspect to it. There's meant to be incense in here, but to be honest, I am actually very sensitive to incense and I don't pick up any incense, which is good for me because I'm not a fan of incense. But I, I kind of don't get the incense. Maybe, maybe you know, if you have this or have tried it and you can smell the incense, let me know. Maybe I'm just missing it, but I, I don't detect incense really. But I mean, this one stayed very green throughout the entire fragrance. It has something called Pemu or Pemau root, um, which is the root of an evergreen tree that grows in Vietnam. Again, that's not something I've smelled before. But it's interesting, it's very unusual and different again. Um, I mean, it's like sitting in, in the jungle in China, watching a family of pandas eat bamboo. I mean, that's it. I mean, it's just fresh and clean and green uh, with this sort of spicy pepper in the opening. And kind of like, you get a bit more of the wood and the, the musk in the dry down, but it's still very green. I find it very hard to describe this one, to be honest, um, because I'm not quite sure what I'm smelling, you know. I've not smelled a lot of these notes before, like this Pamao root. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff in here that, you know, that, that is new to me, like the Zizou leaves. I have no idea what that smells like. But it's very green, um, kind of waxy, with this slight kind of muskiness, but it's a very mild musky. It's more about the greenness and the bamboo and, and, and the Pamao or Pamu root. Definitely interesting, although I am not a particular fan of green fragrances, so it's not one I would use myself. In terms of longevity, that was about five hours on my skin. It was a bit more, uh, a bit more of a tamer scent, with about an hour or two in a soft, sort of moderate projection. Although the the first half an hour is actually quite strong in terms of projection, it is quite heavy when you first spray it. But interesting and unique again. Uh, definitely interesting scent. Next up is Rhinoceros. So this guy right here is Rhinoceros. Probably um, my most enjoyed fragrance from from the uh, from the men's. I, I view Hummingbird more more leaning towards the women's side. Although the dry down kind of is a bit more masculine because you lose that fruitiness in the opening. But um, anyway. Rhinoceros. If you remember one of my older videos, I said I would never own a boozy fragrance, and this does have rum in it, but I can appreciate how good it smells, and it is actually my favourite from the line. The rum actually doesn't, um, 
hang around too long, which is good for me because I don't like boozy fragrances. Um, but it opens up with this um, authentic rum accord. I get a little bit of lavender, a little bit of sage, a little bit of pine. It's a very interesting mix and I get this tobacco note. It's a very dry tobacco, um, almost like kind of like a cigar kind of dry tobacco. Um, but the rum only lasts about five or so minutes before it kind of disappears and you get more of this tobacco and um, a kind of a smokiness. It's, it's interesting. I find it again hard to describe. There's Immortel in here which I had to look up because I had no idea what it was and it's meant to smell like, um, like burning sugar, like a smoky burnt caramelly sugar and I kind of do get that. There is a slight kind of smoky vibe to it without smelling like smoke and it's just really interesting. I get a lot of tobacco um, and quite woody and leathery. You get like an old um, worn in kind of leather like you would imagine how a rhino smells that you know that really thick skin. It's definitely interesting um, and it's like uber masculine. This is probably like one of the most masculine things I've ever smelled. But I mean, the notes in here are masculine. You know, you got rum, you got tobacco, you got leather, you got woods. These are really, you know, as macho as you can get in a perfume. But I mean, yeah, you, I mean, you get that rum. Like I say, you get lavender. I get pine and tobacco and this kind of burnt, kind of slightly burnt kind of smokiness. And then you get this really nice, it's the leather accord that I actually like the most in this. You do get like a thick sort of worn in leathery kind of uh, scent coming on, on it in here. With these sort of woods and this smokiness and this sort of tobacco -iness. And I'm actually, I'm not a fan of tobacco either, but it, it actually works in here. I would definitely wear this. I'm glad that boozy note doesn't hang around long. Like I say, I'm not a fan of boozy notes, but the way it progresses in the mid, and I actually enjoyed the tobacco note in this surprisingly. I didn't think I would ever enjoy a tobacco based fragrance. So I'm surprised, you know, maybe my tastes are developing a little bit here, but it is really, really nice. It's very, very masculine, quite heavy. In terms of uh, sorry, in terms of longevity, I got about seven hours out of this, which I think is you know reasonable. With about two to three hours of a, a moderate uh, a sillage and projection, I'm perfectly happy with the performance on this one. I mean, it just smells like probably the most masculine thing you can smell like, but it's really nice. I'm tempted actually to buy this and I might actually get it at some point this year. I'm going to give it a few more wearings to see how I feel about that tobacco note. I'm okay with the, with the, with the boozy note in the beginning because it just doesn't last all that long. But it's really nice. I mean, I honestly never thought I would like a tobacco fragrance to be honest and you know, pleasantly surprised. Maybe my tastes are changing, I'm not sure. but. It just works in this fragrance really, really, really well, and I really love that leatherness uh, to it. My favourite from the line, very, very tempted to get a bottle of this. I'm, re I'm really enjoying it. It's really, really good. <laughs> uh, I'm going to get carried away smelling it. It's very, very enjoyable. If you like leather, um, if you like uh, tobacco, a little bit of smokiness, um, definitely check it out. I mean, it's just it's really, really good. Next up, we have uh, the last one in the line, Hummingbird. This is really, really nice. Like, one of the nicest fragrances that I've ever smelled. I mean, it's really, really good. <sighs> to me, it's more feminine. It opens and the reason is just because of the fruity opening and the kind of florals in the mid. When it opens up, I smell sort of an even mix of apple and cherry, kind of probably slightly more of the cherry. 
and then kind of a little bit of pear as well and the pear kind of gets stronger as it goes but initially it's apple and cherry and then you, the pear comes up and then it's sort of uh, dribbled over with honey like a really thick sweet honey but um, the, a lot of the time I'm put off with honey and fragrances because it comes off as sickly like too overly sickly and sweet like I'm not a fan of by Killian's Back to Black because to me it's very sickly um, and kind of hard to smell without feeling a little bit sick but the honey in this is like uh, super smooth and not overly sweet it's not too sickly it's just really really nice maybe it's just the way it's blended with the fruits and the florals but it's really really delicious and just absolutely gorgeous smelling I mean it really is gorgeous in the mid you kind of get these kind of florals coming up through there and like people say there's like a, a cream like a whipped cream I kind of I might spray it again I kind of got the cream but I kind of struggled like thinking is it cream I'm smelling But it's just, it's, it's beautiful. The, the honey note is absolutely gorgeous. The, the fruitiness of it is delicious. The florals in the mid are really nice. And then you kind of get like these blonde woods coming up through in the base, which is sandalwood and white woods. It's an amazing woman's perfume. I mean, it really is incredible. I let my sister have a go of this one after I tested it and she completely fell in love with this fragrance. She absolutely, absolutely adores this fragrance. So <laughs> I'm probably going to have to buy her a bottle of this. Um, it's actually her, she's going to be turning 40 next year, which is kind of like a milestone, like a, a big, more of a bigger deal, turning 40. So I think I'm, I'm probably going to treat her for her 40th birthday next year and buy her a bottle of this. She really loves it. I really love it. I think it smells awesome. It's one of the nicest uh, female scents I've smelled. To me, it is definitely more feminine. As it dries down, maybe a little bit more unisex um, once those fruits have gone, but still you, you do get those florals in the honey which just keep it feminine to me. But it's, it's absolutely gorgeous, it's beautiful. My sister completely fell in love with it. My mum actually really likes this one as well. Um, very popular with the, with, the, with the women. Just beautiful, really gorgeous. In terms of longevity, again, it was excellent. I got a good 11 hours on my skin with that, and my skin is actually a little bit funny with fragrances. Like, you know, I tend to have quite low longevity on a lot of fragrances, but this, I got a good 11 hours. It projected moderately, it wasn't a beast, but it was more modest for about two to three hours, which I think is good for this fragrance, because I think if it pushed out too far, it might be a little bit cloying and a bit sickly. But it just gives you a nice sort of aura of this just delicious sweetness. It's just really incredible. But uh, I've enjoyed all of them. Personally, I would own Rhinoceros for myself. And I'm definitely going to have to get a Hummingbird for my sister. An amazing woman's fragrance. Rhinoceros, Rhinoceros is an amazing man's fragrance. They're all interesting. Probably my favourite after Rhinoceros would be Beaver and then bat and panda was kind of my least favorite just because i'm not a fan of green uh, green scents in general all extremely unique extremely interesting very arty very creative i've got huge ad admiration and respect for the perfumers involved with all of these and to uh, and to you victor fantastic house um they're just genius i think the whole idea is just is very very good I've really hugely appreciated you um, being generous enough to send me these samples. I've really enjoyed it. Highly encourage anyone watching to definitely get, at least get samples of these because you, you can't be a fragrance head. You, know, you can't be in this fragrance community without smelling this house. They're just crazy unique. Oh. Oh, rhinoceros is so good. I mean, Jesus. Go buy yourself, go buy yourself samples guys, crazy good, I'll see you in the next video, bye.